global warming, natural disasters, economic crises, and unseen threats. The road ahead for humankind is shrouded with uncertainty. Is it better to fight against the odds or to be intimidated by the difficulties? The future demands that we pull together to face the challenges. The world saw an unexpected turn in 2020. Six and a half million deaths and over 600 million infections caused by a virus. Facing the rapid spread of the novel coronavirus, the southeastern European country Serbia needs urgent help. It declared a state of emergency on March 15th, 2020. Three days after Serbia declares its state of emergency, on March 18th, Wuhan, the first Chinese city hit by COVID-19, achieves zero new infections, winning an arduous battle. For some medical workers in the city, a new battle is beginning. They board a flight to Serbia five days after President Vucic has called China for help. Today,用塞尔维亚政府的邀请并受国家卫健委的委托由广东省组建的中国赴塞尔维亚抗疫专家组启程出发为塞尔维亚应对新冠肺炎疫情提供援助。那当时我们的飞机停在他的机场的时候
In just two weeks, China built a laboratory for COVID testing in Belgrade, increasing the country's daily testing capacity tenfold. The same type of labs are now providing large-scale testing solutions to more than 30 countries and regions worldwide. Lil Da Yue was one of the earliest doctors to go to Wuhan. His experience in deciding who should be prioritized for treatment based on their symptoms played a key role in helping Serbia establish a refined diagnosis and treatment process. Chanzu with the help of the Chinese medical team, Serbia managed to keep the mortality rate among its COVID cases at below 2%, much lower than the average global mortality rate of 6.9% at that time. Thank you for coming. I speak in the name of Serbian people. Okay. You is a hero. Wow. <laughs> Thanks to the hero elements of the friendship and brotherhood, China and Serbia。我啊。Serbia。Thank the Serbian government decorated the Chinese medical team's members for their untiring efforts in the fight against the pandemic. When the fate of mankind is under threat, they champion the spirits of humanity, compassion and devotion. Quiet大洲,国际范围内,去制平救人的时候,对我自己的人生是一个非常重要的一个经历。我们在整个这个世界当中,大家都是彼此相互联系的,健康问题来讲,不单是我们一个国家要把疫情的这个工作做好,其实
But in 2015, this was tested when an unprecedented earthquake struck the country. More than 150 have already people have died in Kathmandu. And the figure is expected to go up. Oh, oh, oh. Survivors are still being told from the rubble. The death toll is almost 9,000. Injured over 20,000 with the request to don donor communities as well as private sector to make necessary contribution. The quake took many things away from Nepal's people, including their loved ones and treasured historical buildings. The Bazantapur Tower was one of over 850 monuments damaged by the earthquake. It was built in the 18th century by King Prithvi Narayan Shah, who unified Nepal into the country that exists today. For locals, it is more than just a building. These are the sites they use on a daily basis. They are all living heritage sites. They're not dead monuments. It was very difficult, difficult for us. Certainly we need the support from the international community or the international donor country. Nearly 10% of the Basantapur tower collapsed completely. 80% of its walls were deformed and cracked. Local Nepalese could not just let the site crumble. The problem what I think in the earthquake, why we lose so many heritage buildings, because they are not properly maintained on time. Many of the buildings which was collapsed, they are not maintained for many decades. While rich in culture, Nepal is ranked as one of the poorest countries in Asia by the World Bank. With an economy mainly driven by agriculture, it lags behind industrially. The country needs help to restore its heritage. Finding the right people to work on these historical buildings to restore them was one of the major challenges. We have very limited number. To save the ancient endangered buildings, a group of Chinese cultural relic restoration engineers flew from Beijing to Kathmandu. Once there, they joined a team of international experts from UNESCO. I'm Guo Tianru, I'm a scientist in the Chinese Cultural Relic Restoration. 我从二零一七年参加中国政府援助尼泊尔家的满都都巴广场九层神庙修复项目第一次去的时候是一六年一二年吧总的一个工作组去的现场看到地震以后第一个呢就是建筑损伤非常厉害它的整体的回字形建
，就是修完以后，我们一定要打扫它，修修如旧。你不能说，呃，这些木头看到，呃，有点早修了，它几百年了，它肯定它就有点昏黄。但是它不在影响结构的前提下，尽量要保留它。我们搞建筑，干脆新盖一个不行了，那没意义了。就是几百年才它才是反映它的文化和它的历史。所以说我都是从老百姓，你看我那瓦都是旧瓦，都是从老百姓家收的。The Chinese team traced down original materials and techniques using documents provided by the Nepalese. These included a specific wood used during the original construction. We did the first job was this professional cleaning. There are about 1,000 old wood pieces. So these old pieces, you have to collect them, collect them, and find their original place. This is a decisive factor for Xu. Just the temple. 他大量用这个梭罗木，维修过程当中，尤其是古佩的构件，你一定要选择跟它原有建筑的这个材质是要一致的。他这儿都是梭罗木吗？有，俺们都稍微杀了多少年呢？杀了，是的。我们现在需要七米三的木头。我不能有中间有断的，然后不能有重眼儿，然后不能有有开裂特别多的那种。你跟他说，我因为我要放在那个九层塔那个第七层，就上面还有两层，两层建筑呢，所以他他得承承受一定的重量。你怎么通过这个工作过程，对他的传统工艺的传承，起到一个促进和一个帮助的作用？只有尼泊尔的工匠，才能够说呢，最大限度的保持他原有的这种工艺和做法。当地的工匠，我觉得很奇妙。他有可能看到一个头，他就知道这上面会有一个什么样的佛像了，就好像我们中国人知道十二生肖一样。所以在这种时候，我们是完全尊重当地人的意见的。你们明天不是休息吗？休息几天？他们是休息明天一天啊，还有两个人，大概休息一个星期，就没没关系。这因为是你们尼泊尔的节日，对吧？所以说，作为我们中方也尊重你们，是你们节日该休息就休息。你也想干 ？OK 吧 ？OK。OK。还是我们 OK。OK， Thank you。嗯。In July 2022, after five years of endeavor. The main body of the Basantapur Tower was completely restored. Today's Basantapur Tower contains 85% of its historical components. Recovered from its disastrous trauma, the ancient structure shines with the glory of its past, as well as the new charm of its restoration. Under combined international efforts, most of Nepal's damaged sites have thus recovered. Ah, your party. मनी मंडप बन से पार्टी बनी कि जो बनी ऐसे जो आये रे बनी बस ना होने था उनके ये सब कोई बात के को कुने कुने था वो मैं नौ यान टाले को कुने पुराने देखें सब हो जाता कुन कुन पार्ट नौ यान सा ओ त्या माथी सब पे नौ यान सा यो क्यों नौ यान की पुराना नौ यान यो Thank you. 在这个九层神庙这个修复历史上也是留下了一笔，我觉得这个就是你感觉你修复了这个文物，你就成为了这个文物修复历史的一个部分。我就觉得做了一件有意义的事儿，起码从最终的结果来说，呃，文物本体修完了，这个我非常高兴。因为我觉得从这个保护人类共同文化遗产的这个角度来说，参与这件事儿，我觉得是很有意义的。There will be less globalization. In fact, I think we have entered an era of deglobalization. Uh, the global economy is not a zero-sum game. 
threatens to tip tens of millions of people over the edge into mass anger and famine. Unlike disasters coming out of the blue, global inequality is today expanding at an increasing rate with longer term and further reaching consequences for humankind. Our productivity will be less dynamic. 2022 was already looking like a terrible year for global hunger. Food crises, a widening digital divide, shrinking trade. Over 100 million people fell back into extreme poverty in 2021, increasing the total number of such people globally to over 700 million while the richest individuals hold some one-tenth of global wealth. As the second largest economy, what responsibilities should China assume for the world? China is already taking action. Firstly, in an area where it excels, building infrastructure. A new lifeline. That's what the Kenyans call this railway. Across the Great Savannah, it has some of the world's most splendid views. Up to 10,000 people commute on the standard gauge railway that links the capital Nairobi to the country's largest port city, Mombasa. People from all walks of Kenyan life climb aboard every day. One of them is this single working mom. I miss my family a lot, but I also miss the weather in Mombasa. I miss going to the beach. Working in Nairobi, but with her daughter living in Mombasa, Faith has long been looking forward to this 8am train that will take her home. I haven't told my daughter and my mom that I'm going home. This is... They have no idea that I'm on my way. I'm on the train right now going to see them. So this will be such a surprise for both of them, especially my daughter, because she hasn't seen me since May, two months ago. So I can't wait. And I know she'll be so surprised. She's going to die. But yeah, she'll be so happy. Being 500 kilometers away from her daughter was not something Faith wanted, but she had to make a difficult decision. The father has, uh, is addicted to alcohol, and there's no way I'll raise my daughter in a household like where somebody is drinking every day in excess. So yeah, I'd rather raise her alone. She learns better morals from me than being two parents who are constantly fighting over alcoholism and she'll never be happy in that household. Faith's six-hour train journey is over, and she finally meets her daughter at the six-year-old's favorite place. After being offered a job at Kenya's largest e-commerce company in Nairobi, Faith decided to move to the capital for a better salary. Being a single mother is tough. I just teach her to be a strong girl, to be independent. Just hoping to provide a happy home for her. So I need, I need to work hard, I need to work smart so that she's always happy. Travelling between the two cities was a tough journey before. In 2017, the new railway went into operation and changed the whole experience. Before this year, you had to go to CBD in Nairobi to book your ticket for Mombasa. And there are so many pickpockets there, they're so crowded. This is not something that I would like to experience right now. It leaves at the specified time and it arrives at this exactly specified time. So it's very punctual. This is much safer than the bus. Kenyans needed a new and modern railway. Changes came in 2014 when ground was broken on the SGR. It's the largest infrastructure project in Kenya 
since its independence in 1963. A Chinese company was contracted to build the railway and put it into operation after merely two years and a half. Kenya is only one of the many African countries to benefit from Chinese-built mega-projects. Across the continent, China has built over 6,000 kilometers of roads and railways, 20 ports, over 80 power plants, and 170 schools. Over 130 medical facilities. During the past 20 years, trade volume between China and Africa has increased 20 times, creating over 4.5 million jobs for locals. Today, the SGR has achieved revenue balance. The Chinese engineers who built it did not choose to stay. Instead, they trained local staff and handed over the operational railway to them in July 2022. Samuel, as a rolling stock technician, is one of 3,000 local trainees. And when I'm doing those things to make sure that everything is happy, the customer is satisfied, that's my job. I don't want to hear a customer is complaining that there's no power, that the AC is not working. This is the biggest project in the country. I'm a pioneer of this project. We are the pioneer. This is my country. And uh, when I'm working, I'm not working for myself. I'm working for generation after generation that is coming. Just like Faith, the project has changed the lives of countless Kenyans. In the first five years of the SGR's operations, over 7 million passenger trips have been made. 16 freight trains run on the line every day. It carries 40% of the cargo between the port of Mombasa and its hinterland. All in all, the SGR has been a major boost to the national economy. Kenya's GDP reportedly rose by 1.5% because of it alone, and it is now an essential part of locals' lives. I'm very happy, I'm delighted to work and to deliver and to be part of the development in my country. So she's six now and in 10 years time she'll be 16. I'm hoping she'll be... And I'm hoping she'll pick up on extra better curricular activities. Right now she's doing judo. She wants to join the skating team here in Miami. I'm just hoping at 16 she'll be a little, she'll be more independent, she'll understand a lot of things that are happening. I'll be able to answer questions and she'll be able to understand them. And hopefully she'll be in one of the best schools in Kenya. Apart from infrastructure, a second area where China has excelled over the past decade is the digital economy. The World Economic Forum predicts that about 70% of new value created in the global economy over the next decade will be based on digitally enabled platform business models. Can China's success be applied to other regions? with vastly different cultures and geography. Rita Huang, a Chinese female entrepreneur and internet veteran, saw a market opportunity in the Middle East. My name is Huang Zhen, I'm now in Shatelliade. I'm the founder of iMind. iMind is a company in the mobile device industry. Your name is Faiz? Yes. Yeah, I see your order from my mat. In 2017, Huang founded a logistics provider, iMile, in Dubai. 
Starting with a handful of employees, her vision was to build the most efficient delivery network for local businesses. Things work differently from the way they do in China. Mailing addresses, for example, posed a big and unexpected challenge. Efficiency of package delivery depends largely on the courier's experience. Luckily, China went through a similar experience at the start of its e-commerce boom. We use a The job of Iris Wang, who is a 26-year-old Chinese employee, is to work with couriers to adjust the tax system to local customs. We will just add the navigate function. So you can you can just use the one to, to navigate. Now we can just show you the location, it's nearby. Now iMiles average package delivery distance has been reduced by 30%. Its services are making a big difference for local businesses. Empowered by advancing technologies and business models, e-commerce is burgeoning in Saudi Arabia with market revenue reaching $7.7 .7 billion last year. In e-commerce, in fact, the kingdom is one of the world's 10 fastest growing markets. Chinese innovation is making its mark. We can give them like a, a cheaper price to join in us and to make their life easy with them. Looking ahead, Rita Huang wants to share China's digital technology with more people. When we start with uh, iBuy, uh, the things which we uh, uh, like it, the first thing is technology. All the technologies in-house is easier. We want to focus on uh, last mile and we want to uh, enhance the coverage, not only for one country in particular. While boosting development in foreign countries by building them infrastructure 
and increasing their digital capabilities, China is also opening its own market wider to the world. Globalization has driven the country's near 10% average annual growth rate since the late 1970s. The global supply chain crisis is happening right now. Supply chain isn't functioning as it normally does. That's one of the biggest challenges facing companies around the world. Now it's time for China to boost global trade, which has been hard hit by the COVID pandemic. A look at China's biggest port shows how this can happen. Nimbo have one of the biggest port of China, so it's good to export. Here, there is a lot of good suppliers that uh, can fit your kind of product that you develop. The COVID was a big problem because of our supply chain, but uh, other for us is, is okay. No complaint. For 13 years, Lingbo Zosan port has been the world's largest port in terms of cargo tonnage. Among all the goods being shipped out every day, a tiny portion belongs to Rodrigo. Hello, my name is Rodrigo D'Angelo. I'm from Brazil. I'm living in China about three and a half years now. I'm a designer and I work with different kinds of products, mostly fitness and kitchenware products. So you see, this is one automatic package robot Oh, very nice. The robot folds the box. Yeah. <laughs> With this, we can save two labor. Rodrigo's career in China started with a TV show featuring creative entrepreneurs. Winning a prize on the show in 2016 gave him opportunity of opening the first Brazilian design company in China. I could choose other countries that could be cheaper, but why I choose China? China is the best place to manufacture products. So make all sense. I came to China to speed up production and make the product feasible. Foreign investors agree with Rodrigo. From 2015 to 2020, China rose 59 places in the World Bank's doing business rankings. One factor leading to an improved business environment has been a shortened negative list for foreign investment. Since 2013, restricted areas have been reduced by 85%. Three months after Rodrigo came to China, the COVID pandemic broke out. With world trade being hard hit, Rodrigo and his wife had to decide to stay or leave. She's like an animal doctor and she works in the government in Brazil. So it's a high position. For her, it's very difficult to stop working in the government and come to China to follow my dream. She never have been in China before. But I told her, hey, China is amazing. China is safe, it's clean. When we arrive here, maybe we learn to live like a, a born again. I don't know how to express this. If this is not love, I don't know what it is. <laughs> After two years of adjusting to local life, the couple are glad they decided to stay. Rodrigo's business has been rewarded with 50% annual growth in spite of the impact of COVID. The pandemic, in fact, has led to more online shopping, boosting his sales. A new barbecue machine he has been developing is about to hit the market. It should be more than 200. Yes. The, the prototype before this one, the temperature is yeah. better than this one. Two, two, yeah. Two, two, yeah. No, 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 not a, not a reach, not a reach. Yeah, but a two two zero and oh. one, one two seven yeah. oh. should be same performance. Wow. Yes, it's quite different. So this is the reason. I think maybe we need to design one mechanism to avoid this situation. Uh -huh. I, I agree. So it, it will be more durable. Oh, yes, yes, of course. One of the things that more impressed me is the speed of things happen here in China. Really, it's very fast. 
not only construction uh, infrastructure, no. And the mindset of China is changed. China is now is an ecosystem that can understand a lot of about products and can create innovation and products with high level quality. Rodrigo's products have featured strongly in the best-selling lists of Brazil's biggest multi-channel retail platform. His success, in fact, has made him a familiar face on his home country's TV. Bom, gente, agora é hora da gente apresentar para vocês o Rodrigo. Tá, legal, legal. O Rodrigo, obviamente, é, é um cara importante nessa história, né, João? Então já pulou da cadeira e já foi lá discutir comigo, ver produto, detalhes e tudo mais. Aí ele já começou a perguntar, tá, mas como que funciona o escritório? Como que funcionam os projetos? É... Aí a gente começou a discutir sobre China. The number of expats living in China grew by more than 50% between 2010 and 2020. New arrivals include some now being born in the country. Matter of fact, when I, I tell uh, everyone, hey, I have a daughter made in China, <laughs> because my second daughter born here in China. Olivia uh, is studying in a great school, and uh, now she can uh, speak Chinese fluently and uh, English as well. And we uh, expect this uh, happen with Monica as well. Maybe she will start uh, speak Chinese first, then Portuguese, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so. Uh, in China here, it looks like we are living like in the future. Yeah, because of the buildings, because of uh, technology and everything. And if you don't believe me, check my social media, <laughs> check my Instagram, then you see. The UN panel of experts has found that one million animal and plant species face extinction more than any other time in recorded history. Nature is essential for our existence and a good quality of life. China has one of the richest natural heritages in the world. In its southwestern province of Yunnan lives the Asian elephant, the largest land animal in the continent. Its daily routine is to eat, play and sleep. To sustain its size, an adult spends two-thirds of the day feeding on grass and roots. Corn, rice and sugarcane are its favourite food. Even distillers grain. The Asian elephant is classified as an endangered species. Thanks to protection efforts, their population in China has increased from 180 to nearly 300 in the past 40 years. In Xishong Bana, there is a team of workers who specialize in rescuing and caring for Asian elephants. They are known as the Elephant Fathers. So far, Chen Ziming and his colleagues have rescued over 20 wild elephants. Seven-year-old Yan Niu was left by her herd a week after she was born. Weak and helpless, she wouldn't have survived in the jungle. Luckily, Chen and his team found her and brought her up. Eventually, rescued elephants will return to the forest where they belong. While baby elephants are cute, their adult parents can make a lot of trouble. Elephants are really protective here. So then I think that has led to 
a growing elephant population and elephants are growing beyond these uh, natural areas. Ahimsa came to see Shong Bana in 2016 to study the creature's behavior and a better way for humans to coexist with their giant neighbors. The Spanish ecologist believes one of the reasons behind increasing human-elephant conflicts lies in China's success in forest conservation. Over the last decade, one in four trees has been planted in China. When you go into in the very, very uh, old growth forest, deep forest, there is almost no food for elephants. Elephants don't like to spend too much time there because there is not enough food. So elephants probably would like less this forest, but that's not a bad thing because we don't want to protect just elephants. We are here to protect biodiversity. That's the difficult job of a, of a manager. They had to balance out different priorities. A few days ago, a group of unexpected guests broke into this fish farm. The intruders then ran amok, leaving a mess behind when they left. The Chinese government decided to compensate the villagers for their loss. To better help locals coexist with their giant neighbors, since 2019, Gua and his team have installed an early warning system made up of 600 infrared cameras. Huawei相机目前为止是我们作为亚洲相监测的一个重要的一个手段。我们把Huawei相机安装在亚洲相经常出没的那些路径。大家的注意一下，这段时间亚洲相活动比较频繁，对我们的一些野外的一些设备可能
坏的东西。那亚洲象作为西双版纳人民当中的一个非常神圣的一个物种，在过去很多人见到象，他会行跪拜的礼。我们当地的群众实际上对象非常崇拜。整个西双版纳不仅仅是我们人类的西双版纳，实际上也是我们整个动物的西双版纳，就是我们人与动物实际上是要和谐相处。Over the past decade, China has established over 10,000 protected areas, accounting for 18% of its total land area. It has restored 1,200 kilometers of coastline and 23,000 hectares of coastal wetlands. More than 300 species of endangered wild animals and plants have seen their numbers recover. Working in China as a researcher offers Ahimsa a unique experience that nowhere else can provide, as well as a new perspective on the country's efforts in wildlife conservation. I think China has made very positive improvement over the last 15 years or so. I think there has been a clear commitment towards conservation and the case of elephants is a very good example. This is something that I admire about uh, China, that the uh, science is taken very seriously for policy making and decision making. China has participated in international cooperation on biodiversity conservation for decades. China is now a very important global player. So China has influence over conservation in Africa, all throughout Asia, Latin America. So I think that's for me the, the next challenge, you know, bringing up this conservation commitment to anything that China is involved globally. Economic growth and technological innovation are of greatest benefit when each individual has more choices. When shared prosperity leaves no one behind and when the government can truly serve the people. With decades of hard work now bearing fruit, more Chinese now take pride in their history and have confidence in their culture and future than ever before. The change in mentality has in turn led to an increased willingness to shoulder responsibility at a global level. Chinese政府的方式展开，人类社会面临前所未有的挑战。中国坚持对外开放的基本国策，坚定奉行互利共赢的开放战略，不断以中国新发展为世界提供新机遇，推动建设开放型世界经济，更好惠及各国人民。中